Live from the res here, special guest, the one, the only, Mr. Jonathan Joss, and one of our leaders here in our community here, Mr. Adrian Brown yeehaw, in the house. Yeehaw, yeehaw, yeehaw. You guys are looking good, man, looking smooth. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing excellent, man. Thank, thanks for having me here. Thank you, Mr. Adrian Brown, for having me here live on the res. That's right, Viejas Res. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. The, the the clean look is all a facade, so don't get too involved with it at this point, okay? Thank you. <laughs> so are, how are you holding up, Adrian, with the uh, COVID, everything out? You're in a position of leadership right now. Are you holding up? You feel strong? You feel, uh, you feel good-spirited as we get into the winter months and stuff? I feel good spirited. I think there's a lot of challenges we have to meet with, uh, you know, the current situation that's going on. And uh, but that's just part of the times. I think every leader has uh, that on their mind and and that on their concerns, and also, you know, taking the positive moves to make sure that we uh, pull through this. Uh, hopefully, uh, there's some, you know, there's some light at the end of the tunnel, as we know. So hopefully, it'll come sooner than later. But yes, it's a challenge, and I would like to thank all the public for helping us out, and everybody on all those reses for helping us out with yeah. uh, keeping this a, a great moment in light of the challenges. Yeah, I think it's been good, man. It seems like I know our res has been kind of, things kind of slowed down a little bit, you know, on the res, but um, meaning like, you know, for that period of time, March, April, May, but it seemed like pe families were together, kids were home from school, families were together, people were seemed safe on the res, seemed like a good vibe, and I know you guys came through as a council to take care of everybody, you know, it really felt like um, like those old stories the elders used to talk about, you know, when people visiting each other and being around. People weren't really visiting, but, you know, all my kids are home. It just seemed like a long summer break. Had a good vibe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it brought some people closer, maybe. But I think that the whole uh, key to it for uh, the Native Americans was that the Native Americans are always close anyways, and we always take care of each other anyways. And so I think that that has been what our heart, and the Native heart is what has pulled us through it, you know, at this point, you know, and uh, – so uh, thank you to uh, the whole family, the tribe, all the reses out there. Best of wishes from me. Right, right on, man. right on. You know, I, I think part of it is, is, is the power of social distancing. I mean, it doesn't mean making anyone weaker. If anything, you can social distance. I mean, think about it, it's social. And, and, and still be able to be strong and be family-oriented. And I think just from the, the little time I've spent so far here at the casino, here on the res, it's like viejas and, and, and like most native uh, families and, and, and native reses and they have really mastered the idea of social distancing mm -hmm. with being able to communicate i mean just because we're, we're keeping so many feet away doesn't mean that we still can't have each other in our heart and, and keep things positive and i think again like like mr brown said that that's one of the wonderful aspects about being native mm -hmm. is that we have mastered uh, the ability to communicate uh from a distance uh through our hearts through our souls uh, so again, the power of social distancing doesn't mean to to weaken social and, and and strengthening is what I like to call it. Yeah, I like that. It's resilient for us too. Locking down on the res, it definitely is strengthening. Speaking of heart, man, I don't want to uh, <laughs> jump right in on this, but I, a little bird told me uh, some big life changes have happened for you. Yes, so yeah, that sounds like some cool stuff. Yes, what, what, what's going down, man? You know, I, first of all, I'm getting older. Going to be 55 years old this this year. Um, making some really major changes. Uh, I guess Congratulations, by the way. 55 is like the new 30 or something. Yeah, yes. You know, it really yes. is. Especially yeah. for his name. Yes, man. sure it is. We're eating better now, I guess. Hey. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's a saying. major change. Uh, I just got married yesterday. Yeah, boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. I, thank you very much. Thank That's you. Um, it's it's my first time, and uh, the wife's like eighth, I think. But uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But uh, I was able to, to, to make it work out to her um, doing the honeymoon here uh, at Viejas. Um, I have a nice quiet time here and uh, got married down in Los Angeles at a place called uh, uh, Love Me um, Cathedral. It's the Albertson Chapel. And uh, the best thing about it is, is evidently I knew this guy that was performing the wedding 15 years ago. And he's like, oh, don't, don't I remember? I said, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Who doesn't remember me? You know? <laughs> and, um, and he gave me a free upgrade because the original plan of getting married, we were going to do it uh, in the car through a drive through Oh, for okay. Yeah, yeah okay. that was the cheapest thing we could do. Sure. Yeah, and it was like you know three hundred bucks or something. So the guy come out and said, "Listen, would you would you like an upgrade?" And you know they get you in the upgrades, man. I don't <laughs> care if you, if you get anything. I don't care upgrades, McDonald's, super size. It's going to cost you. So they always get you. They get you in the upgrades, man. I mean, it's like they get you. They get you, man. 
I wonder uh, if it's like they break the treaty and then they get you with the yeah. with the upgrades, man. <laughs> uh, so the guy comes out and he's offered us the, a free upgrade. So of course, like any individual, I said free, honey. We are getting a free upgrade. So it was wonderful. It's we on did me, it. Kinda. Yeah, we did it indoors. You know, I was trying to do it. You know, all stoic and honey. Let's do it outside. Yeah, like our people and their people before <laughs> on the sidewalk there in La Brea, in our La Brea tar pits. Um, but we got the free upgrade. Went inside. Uh, did it inside, and uh, we picked up a couple of nice rings at a pawn shop. Thank you, King's Pawn, uh, located on Vermont. Thank you, King's Pawn. Um, Evidently, the rings didn't work the first time from somebody. So hopefully, the second time around, they'll, they'll work this time. Maybe it was this. The, this is the third time. Third will be the charm. Oh, that's that's yeah. yeah. You never know. You never know. But it's it's just great. Great to be back in Los Angeles. Great to yeah. be back in in California. Great to be here in, in San Diego. You so know. is that an LA thing? The drive through? I, I you know like I would hate to take make the wrong left. You know if you weren't planning on getting married, just pull in there some couple. Oh, we're getting married. Like oh, I. I this it, 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 I was surprised because there were younger people there. I mean, yeah. there were four different weddings going on within the hour and a half that we sure. were there. Uh, and they offer everything from a, a drive through wedding to, to a sit-down wedding to okay. a full wedding. They have photographers. They have singers. Uh, they've got wardrobe. I mean, it's really such a California experience. That's cool. You know, you go inside and they have a little fake, you know, walls in the back. I mean, it looks – I mean, it – just bring the fake love and you're fine, man. <laughs> well, I, I'm impressed, Jonathan, that you could make the California wedding so romantic that it sounds just as good as a trip to Best Buy. It, yes. Know? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a box there's, there's wedding. There's nothing more enjoyable than that. You it know? was wonderful. It was, it was hey, great. I'm with you. Yeah, thank I'm with you. you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, especially I would have had you there as best man, but yeah. I knew you were busy here. You know, yeah, with, with I, the you elections. Could, well, I was, I was probably still in the pawn shop, so I don't yeah, think you could have got me out. I couldn't afford me. <laughs> no, there we go. There Buying we go. one of his old rings. Yeah, there we go. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. No, it's all right. You know, best stories either end at the pawn shop or start at the pawn shop, <laughs> which if you guys haven't noticed, if you watch Pawn Stars, my picture is, is, is in the majority of the Pawn Stars. Uh, really? In the background. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I was in Vegas. I, I tried to I tried that. to pawn it, but they wouldn't give me any money for it, so I gave it to them. Really? Yeah, I gave them three. I gave one to the old man, I gave one to Chumley, and I gave one to to, to, to Rick. That's pretty cool. I'll have to go uh, back and watch that. I used to watch that all yes. the time. Yeah, you show. can Google you I can sit there and just watch it like three hours straight. You, know, you can Google uh -huh. uh, whose picture is at behind Rick's desk on Paul Porn Stars. And they tell you it's meatloaf, but it's not as me. It's meatloaf. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's like, they look like meatloaf. I'm like, meatloaf. <laughs> How the hell? I mean, come on. I bet those uh, drive-through uh, places are doing good right now, though, because you know the thing yes. is, is if you didn't want to get married and have this big wedding, you kind of can't in California because of all the COVID restrictions. Yes. So if you do want to, you know, get married and do your thing, I would imagine I would just say, yeah, let's just go have fun with it. Let's go through a drive-through. And it's an excuse not to invite any up. family. It's yeah. like, hey, man, I'd like to invite you, but you That's know cool. what? You know, we can't take the risk, and and you're there within our heart. Yeah. Yes. At the end of the day, you know, the ceremony is what matters, or you know, the really the commitment. You know, and the other person yourself, that's what matters. Everything else is kind of... Yeah, that not thirty, know. not spending $30,000. That kind of... Yeah, that's I, for that, sure. that helped, too. I think back yeah. at my wedding night, I try to remember all of it. It seems like it gets blurry after about midnight, but... Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you're paying for a party. Oh, a yeah. They're, they're, I was thinking, yeah. let's see, what time did I pass out? <laughs> no, but uh, but like I said, it's great to be back in L.A. I've been in Texas for a while mm -hmm. um, during this whole COVID experience. A lot of good auditions. It's night and day over there, right? Like here they're very restricted over there. It's not much at no, all. No, it's Texas. Yeah. So we we can still carry our guns. Mm -hmm. You just have to wear a mask. Well, we always wore a mask and carried guns in Texas. <laughs> I mean, what's what's the difference? The bandit. No, but no, it, everything is partially open. Like you can be like 75% open, uh -huh. you know, and, and, and it, you can dine indoors. You have to have your mask. But as soon as you sit down, you can remove your mask. And But, but you know, it's Texas. Yeah. So, you know, we just, we, we just, it's Texas. It's kind of an attitude out there, right? Like a freedom act, a, a freedom attitude. Like you're not gonna tell me what to do. It's a free country type of. Is that out there? It seems like I. I what are you trying to tell me? It. You're trying to tell me what to do? This is Texas, man. I mean, no, well, we're in California. Uh, it, it, it's we'll it's Texas. Yeah, it's it's Texas, man. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at look at. A, I mean, I grew up in a state uh, where there there are no native tribes, mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that. Yeah, you know, um, so it's it's a powerful state. I mean, but we are a unity state. I mean, we 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 kind of stay. Focused on 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 being a proud Texan, whatever that may may may, may mean. Um, but you're looking at, at at a state that was very harshly built. So there, yes, of course, there is an attitude. I mean, of course, I don't have an attitude. You know, I love everyone. So for those uh, that don't know, you're from Texas, right? <laughs> born and raised, grew? born and raised in San Antonio, San Texas. San Antonio, wow. Yep. How did you How did you get from San Antonio 
to Hollywood, man. That's got to be a... It, you know, it was a wonderful... You know, I graduated from a small university called Our Lady of the Lake University in San Antonio. Our Lady of the Lake? Our Lady of the Lake University. Nice Catholic university. That reminds university. me of like uh, Monty Python. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes. Our Lady of the Lake University. It, it really wasn't a... It really wasn't a lake no. actually there. It's kind of like a, a place where like... Uh, uh, Homeless people wash up oh, to yeah. drown and stuff. It's well, Texas like, is dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, but they call it a lake anyway. Yeah. So I graduated from there. Uh, went on the road with uh, Joe Sears and Jason Williams on a play called The uh, Mountain Man Musical and Bobby Bridger uh, through Wyoming. From there, ended up moving off to Dallas. Um, did some some work there on the side and ended up getting a nice decent break uh, working on uh, the old Chuck Norris series. Oh wow! Really? Yeah, I did. I think I did five or six of the Walker Texas Rangers two I did as two bad guys two different characters mm -hmm. um, and then the other you had three, to wear cowboy boots every every uh, episode right for that well actually they they prefer you not to because Chuck oh, okay. was is not is not so tall oh okay so you okay. always tend to, to you want to give give him the height sure you know and the last three that I did I, I did reoccurring I did um, um, the old Uncle Ray in flashbacks mm -hmm. that was uh, Ray Firewalker's role role so was this before all those Chuck Norris jokes, or, or is that already a thing? There, there point? are no Chuck Norris jokes, man. Chuck Norris <laughs> is Chuck Norris. I mean, that's the true. There now, there's true stories. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, does Chuck Norris tell time? No, Chuck Norris tells the time what time it is. You know, uh, but it, no, um, he he was an amazing guy. I, mean, right? I mean, that's one of the cool things about being in this industry so long that I, I've got to see where the jokes come from. Or, or, or what what has spawned these attitudes towards a, a certain actors or what what stories are involved with it for example uh, Chuck Norris um, not a very tall man um, very relaxed old you know he's an old guy I mean he's like what 90 years old now or something so back then he was yeah he was in the 80s making all yeah, man, he, yeah, like, man, yeah. All yeah yeah man yeah that's right so I remember doing this one scene where uh, almost to walk up to Chuck I think it's the second episode that I did one of the second episodes I did and the whole purpose of it was to stop Chuck was going to stop me you know with his hand you know mm -hmm. stop and I came up and I kind of pushed through his hand and his elbow bent and I remember the director saying cut John it goes Jonathan come here he goes when Mr. Norris sticks his hand out he goes it's you know it's like God you know <laughs> he stops you yeah and I'm like well you know here I am playing this badass character and, and I'm and I'm moving in on on the Walker Texas Ranger I was expecting a little bit more drive from him Chuck kind of cut us off well no it's fine or Mr. Norris cut it off it was fine let's let's do this again so I didn't change anything you know I went in with that strong Texas attitude and Mr. Norris did not do much of anything he just completely just just stood there like you know an old white guy <laughs> um so about as I got there he just kind of lifted his hand and I noticed that well he's doing the same motion same energy I'm just going to walk right through his hand again. No, man. He did one of them kung fu karate things. Drop the chi on you? He dropped the chi on me. <laughs> yes, yes. Drop it like it's hot. And he just kind of did a little, just a little yeah. tap. And I felt it radiate through my body down, and I couldn't. And my line was, we don't want your kind around here. And it came out, we don't want your kind around here. Because, I mean, <laughs> stuff like air came out. Yeah. And uh, director just... Back then, it was like, you know, check the gate, boom, uh, rap, boom, cut, perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, Jonathan couldn't move. Everybody leaves, and I'm standing going, what? what? You know? So <laughs> I character for a week. Yeah, yo, really and, and, of course. Hug, I, I, really, I really felt it. I mean, there was wow, no bullshit man. that story. I mean, well, it was it was very interesting. That's yes. Cool. Well, if I may break in here. Remember, I'm still here, audience, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, Jonathan and I first met when... Uh, Actually, here at Viejas, you came to a benefit. Yes, with uh, you came with the the uh, great actor Tim Sampson. Yes, the late Tim Sampson. Late Tim Sampson, uh, son of Will Sampson, good friend of ours, and also, uh, and we were together with uh, Steve Revis, the late yes. Steve Revis, Steve. which uh, ended up being some of my kin. I found out later, shortly later, and uh, we met at uh, the Nigel Dark Cloud Jukwala. Yeah, the run the three, the three over here. The three. Three. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was a celebrity benefit. We we're uh, uh, gaining money for education, and that's where we first met, and we became good friends yes. after that. And then since then, we have been pretty much connected yes. the whole time, you know, whether it be through uh, music, film, or, uh, you know, now just uh, being uh, uh, friends. But 
on the night, speaking of your Chuck Norris story, on the night we met, Steve was so excited to be with all of us. Jonathan and Tim are some pretty big, imposing fellows. I myself, of course, am not. And by that, I mean big by size. And so Steve was getting excited, and he was lifting everybody up in the air. We were all out front of the, the our uh, facility, and so he lifts up Tim. He lifts up Jonathan. And if you remember, you remember this story? And then he lifts up me, and I just kind of kept flying and kept going. <laughs> For real, you guys yeah. had to actually pick me up. Pick I, up. I, don't I mean, worry. You like, you're like, like a little... Dollar. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was the best Adrian. of my weight. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it wasn't fatal. Don't worry, I'm no. still here. Yeah. And so that that was the first time we met. That was back in uh, 1999. Mm-hmm. And since then, we've been working together. Yes, so, yes. And I remember I said, I was asking Jonathan that night when I introduced you, because I was the MC that night, and I said, um, okay, what? Um, can you give me some of your roles that you want me to say when I'm on stage? And he said it was... Uh, what was the one we were talking about that you did with Chris Farley? Oh, uh, uh, Almost Heroes. Almost, Almost Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Were you, Old school. Yeah, where you played Bent Twig. Bent Twig, I yes. love that. Yes. You should You should have kept that name. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. And yeah, he was he's talking. He's not right yeah, in here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you were talking about, uh, I believe it was Lonesome Dove. Yes. Lonesome Dove yeah. and some of the things. And he had some great credits to him. And then he said, he kind of made it sound nonchalant. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, I play a... Uh, John Redcorn on King of the Hill, which is one of my favorite cartoons at the time. Our adult, you know, like just what would you call primetime cartoons, you one know? Of the, yeah. One of the first. Uh, and that was before I knew uh, Jonathan. And I was like, oh my God, what do you mean? You, you just said that like that was the least of your credits. <laughs> that is an awesome credit to have. Well, thank so, you. Thank do, you. Go, do, come on, do me a favor. Uh, Joseph, just because Anastasia Indians used to eat people over 600 years ago doesn't mean we do it today. There we go. <laughs> There's a hole in my pocket where my money should go. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a big old hole. How many people go. walk up to you and go, Jim Rancorn? They just they just think that's your name. That's who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's I mean, the thing, right? I have, like I said, I have fallen. When I was doing the show, I mean, Adrian can contest to this. I was not the happiest of employees when I was doing the show. Oh, okay. Uh, just because there was so much going on, and there was money, and there was fame, and there was just, you know, not appreciating something as we're supposed to. Sure. But I really have discovered, I guess, in the last 10 years, hence since the show's been canceled, that it has really touched a lot of people. Um, I'm part of, uh, of the King of the Hill uh, a fan page on Facebook. Uh, hey, guys. <clears throat> for example, we're right now, the, they're working on doing, uh, like, uh, Animaniacs, but they're calling themselves uh, <clears throat> King of the Hill something Maniacs. So they're basically going to start redoing scenes with, with non-celebrity voices. Some of the great fans are just amazing. So they're working on doing a couple of little small skits where the, the punchline is I'll step in and I'll do the John Redcorn stuff. But again, I didn't really find out until the fans appreciated the show that I, I kind of fell in love with, with, with the show. And I think it keeps going on generationally too because you know like right now that we're in the meme times. You know, everyone's memeing and me, right. you know, this meme, that meme. It's got to be one of the most popular native memes is like there's two of them. One where... I was going to say you are, but your character yes. is climbing in the window, yes. right? And everyone's like going to get the ante or whatever it is. And then there's another... Um, the once one? Yeah. The once, you know, yeah. did, John Redcorn, did your people ever celebrate Thanksgiving? Once. once. And that's coming around. We're going to see that about a thousand uh, uh, yes, times. Yes, that we're, was... We're going to yeah. see that about a thousand times as, next, you know, as, next, yes. as we get closer to Thanksgiving, you know, and as it passes yes. us. But um, the end of thing, n- November, that's probably the meme. But that it just really is. Forward. It, I, just, I, I remember, like I said, a lot of the... The show after the seventh season, when they finally got John Redcorn and Nancy to break up, you start seeing a more fulfilled character. You saw John Redcorn really take a nice peek where you know he opened his casino, and a lot of this stuff is is, is was was driven because of Adrian because he was probably there ninety percent of the time when I when I worked. That was one of the things I didn't get paid money, but I made sure that I got what I wanted when I wanted it. And one of the things was always having Adrian hang out with me uh-huh. while we we're on the set. Um, so I wouldn't say you didn't get paid money. I'd just say you didn't get paid as much as you thought you were worth. Yeah, there you, you go. Know, no, you're one hundred percent correct. Say, I mean, enough. like anyone, like anyone. That's never enough. Never yeah. enough. Uh-huh. Can we have uh, our land back too? While you're paying? Hey, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but it, I will say this though: Adrian's been a good advocate. Because I remember those times, like you know, I was a big Simpsons fan, and as we got towards yes, no. King of the Hill came out, I started watching, and I kind of dropped off because I was for me, I was when I was in college, I was working, I had kids, I was doing all these things, and I kind of like I wasn't watching TV. And then uh, Adrian gave me gave me some of um, something I think you had signed mm-hmm. or something, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Hey, that's pretty cool." There's a, a native character on 
on this King of the Hill. And it kind of got me back into watching it. And, um, but I, you know, like it's kind of takes that word of mouth. Like, Hey, there's a, a native on this show, this popular show that's out there. Cause we're not, they're not, we're not represented a lot. No, you not know? At all. And it's no. always some really corny, cheesy thing. Like that was like yes. a real live person. Yes. Great yes. representation. I want to say like, if you think of all the representation of natives on, on popular TV, I mean, I don't know what the number is. It's gotta be less than a dozen. I can only yeah. think of a few and, and you're like, that's, You're one or two of yeah, those guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. The John Redcorn character was able to admit to his mistakes. You know, they broke up the relationship. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we, we. When I say we, I mean Adrian and I, and the team were able to change the John Redcorn character because uh -huh. we were able to introduce him to. I mean, he he would host. You know, uh, uh, one of the producers. Yeah. Uh, to to Viejas. So we were able to show to them that you know having a character always doing the wrong thing, you know, when everyone else in the show was trying to do the right thing, wasn't really good for us. Sure. And I remember uh, uh, when I was in uh, Tuba City, an elder had told me, she said, you know what? Everyone thinks your character's funny. She goes, to me, it's not very funny. This this man has not owned up to this. And, and I, I took it to heart. Sure. So it took me about seven or eight years to finally get John Redcorn to break that relationship off. And when that happened, you saw a more fulfilled character. Um, Mr. Greg Daniels, big time responsible for, for making that happen. You know, Mike Judge, big time making that happen. Cool. Uh, Adrian Brown, making that happen. Thank you. Uh, up to the point that I ended up doing uh, the Ken Hatote character on Parks and Recreation. Yeah, oh, man. And that's there was another, another character that, that, well, that scene, the Casino Indian, which again, up, Adrian you're Brown. Talking, you're doing the prayer. Oh, man, and, that's just oh, too funny. Oh, my God, man, you're doing the prayer, and you're saying all these things that are not a prayer, and everyone's like, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I think I had a, I seen that I hit up my social media, and, and I think I shared it. The doobie, and, and doobie do. Like 30 people shared it. Yes. That thing, just that like that thirty seconds yes. is just like oh. And what's man. really kind of died. That was funny. What's kind of interesting to watch things change because I've yeah. been in the industry, you know, over twenty five years, um, is how people do listen. I mean, Hollywood is is it has a problem that Hollywood has no imagination. They don't listen, and they just assume that they know everything. I sure. mean, they're like a child, much like all of us. But they do have power. But it's nice to see minorities native people evolve in the right way i mean has hollywood doing the right thing by native people no they haven't are they trying to i, I think they're trying to they just don't know how to but when you see it occur the reason i'm telling the story because it occurred on on parks and recreation during that scene they came and said jonathan you're, you know you're gonna be doing this prayer and you're gonna be doing that i said you know what okay i understand it's gonna be funny and, and with the dialogue is even and we're gonna end with doobie doobie do and and this character ken Atote, i think really was making fun of everyone. Sure. Which I think that was great because he was a he was like Adrian. He was top of his game. You know, he was a tribal member. You know, he was a good man, and he could really poke. You know, like like one of the lines that he plays white people like a fiddle. Yeah. Um. So I'm in waiting to do this doobie doo scene, and one of this young man comes up to me, hands me um, a little bowl, and says, "The prop guy told me to tell you and this is what they had for the prayer." I saw the guy coming over with this. I went, oh, great, man. They're going to give me tobacco. They're going to give me sage. They're going to give me all the stuff that they shouldn't be giving me because this is not the real thing. You sure. know what I mean? And this young man comes up to me and goes, you know, the prop master told me to tell you it's chocolate chip cookie mix. <laughs> oh, and I was, I'll be goddamn. It was chocolate chip cookie mix. And the guy handing it to me just goes, I have no idea what he meant by that. I said, no, go tell the prop master, thank you very much. Because you got to see within my experiences yeah. in this is industry that some people do 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 try. They, they try not to make fun of, and they most importantly take what we hold sacred and special to us and try not to, to exploit it um, when they don't, they don't need to. You know, so it, it, that's, sure. that's it's really, really nice to see. That's you know? cool. That's got to be cool. 25 years probably start in, you know, and then to get to a position where you really can uh, be a force for representation, make sure we represent it in a good way and, and kind yeah. of have that voice and, and see that, that paradigm shift a little bit, you know, <clears throat> yes. where, cause in 20 years, I mean, you think back like 40 years ago, you watch representation of us as natives. Oh man, it's awful. Right. You go 30 years, gotten better. But in the last 20 years, we've really seen like that. A lot that more producers, shift. a lot of more things being done by native native writers, native sure. directors. Um, one of my earlier projects, um, uh, Substitute Wife with Farrah Fawcett. Um, there was a, a great scene where, I'm you know, with Farrah and Leah Thompson and Peter Weller and all these wonderful actors, and I'm eating pancakes. And the big scene was pancakes are in front of me, 
I'm going to eat them. Um, the line is, oh, do you like them, uh, uh, black deer? Set everything in. They brought Farrah Fawcett in, <laughs> and it was a nice greeting. Oh, God, God, she was beautiful. But anyway, I and, uh, had a nice conversation and a nice little visit there with her, and we set up the scene, and the directors, you know, Farrah's there, and they set it up, and they filled this cabin somewhat like this with smoke, and they've got fresh pancakes, and there they are cooking them, and they put them down in front of me, and the director, you in action. They put these pancakes in And action. Director looks at the assistant director and says, Action, action Jonathan. I'm looking at the pancakes. And says, you know, of course, director's not talking to me. Director has to talk to the assistant director. The assistant director then talks to you. Okay. You know, that, you know, you know they do the chief thing, I guess. And uh, he goes, He's not eating the pancakes. Uh, Jonathan, you're not eating the pancakes. And I'm like, uh, Jonathan doesn't have a fork. Oh. How are you expecting Jonathan to eat these without a knife and a fork? I go, I, I don't assume that you're thinking this savage is going to pick them up and eat them with his hands now, are you? Oh, no, Jonathan. No, can we get him a knife and fork, please? So <laughs> yeah, they had to reset everything. Farrah Foss is laughing. And if you see the scene, I have the, the napkin, like, perfect. Sure. Because as an actor and, and as we as individuals and we as Native people, we tend to watch. And, and, and we see, okay, if that's how they are doing it, we're going to respect their approach to things, uh -huh. you know, and do it as they would do it to show okay. that we're respecting what you're doing. So I sat down and just kind of carved the, ate it very, ding. Mm -hmm. great scene. I mean, but Hollywood was so ignorant that they just assumed that I would pick up these pancakes. I ain't gonna lie, at home I eat like that, but oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. Thing up but a tortilla I wouldn't roll, home, man. Thing. I mean, yeah. but no, I know what you mean. I mean, yeah. here's the thing: is they would have put that out there, and then forever that would have been the image of that's how we do it. Right. That's and that's cool that you catch that because yeah. I think sometimes when you do things, you just do them. You kind of forget to think about, you know, people are gonna see this. That's gonna be the representation. That's right. the image that you're gonna have. Right. Right. I mean, you probably have to deal with that a lot, though. I imagine, you know, just like what you put out, I'm, people are gonna remember. Kind of like forever out there. They're going to snip Correct. that, make well, a meme out of it. They're going to put a little video meme right. out of it. I, I'm better at governing the characters that I want to portray or have portrayed okay. than I do governing myself. <laughs> and I mean, that's not the best thing Same. in the world. I'm not very proud of that. That's yeah. usually my job, actually. Yeah, you there know. we go. There, there. Yeah, so, but um, um, again, it, just to be able to be in this industry so long and, and make things sure. happen and, and uh, allowing it to take other, you know, ventures. You know, with the COVID coming in and me getting grounded in Texas... Uh, about nine years ago, I created the Red Corn King of the Grill Rub. It's a barbecue rub. Oh, that's ha cool. I had one. And then after I did Magnificent Seven uh, with uh, Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt, um, played Denali, I came up with the concept of Red Corns. I mean, why not take from everyone? Yeah. Red Corns King of the Grill, seven Magnificent Spice Blends. That's cool. Well, at this time, you pretty much have owned that name now. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that yes. is you, man. Yes. I mean, well, you know, it's, you know, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's their big shoes to fill. I mean, I always give props to, to Victor Aaron, who was the first John Redcorn. Um, always give him props because he had very big shoes to fill. Okay. And, so uh, he was, so how long was he the? Uh, he did one episode. One episode. Oh, one episode. Yeah. And then he took a over. Before you. Yeah, yeah. He did one episode and then okay. he, 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 uh, you know, passed away in a car accident. Oh really? And then I stepped I in the second year. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so a I mean it's just there. That's too bad. you know to, to have my career sure. blossom because another native individual passing. Um, I've always wanted to you know, pay respect, you know, to Victor. Mm -hmm. And um, so you went on to do how many seasons after that? Twelve. Twelve. 12 after 12. Victor, it was thirteen. Passing. Yeah, it was thirteen seasons long, and I did twelve. Wow. Yeah, I mean it, it, it faded it off after you know again John Redcorn quit having the affair with Nancy. Because uh -huh. that was real important for them. But as soon as that kind of ended. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> yeah. Then I, I liked to... it, though, because you know what? It, it makes, like, us natives have, like, this, uh, like, we're uh, especially men, like, we're a sexy or handsome. Like, yes. Like, that would, you know course. what I mean? As opposed to, like, if you look at the old films, like, we're, you know, grunting, like, savages or this and that. Not to, like, have the next door neighbors a native dude and watch your wife because she might like that lustrous hair of his. Of course, of course. You know? She of might course. like that beautiful skin of his. Or, of course. Or just the way he is, you know, his vibe or whatever. You know, I can kind of relate. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> so I what, can no longer heal your wife the way I heal the wives of others. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I think, though, one of our uh, biggest uh, moments was was when we did the uh, 
uh, Red Corn Gambles His Future That episode. was a big deal. Because what they did was uh, Jonathan and uh, Tim and three, George Multi and the third, mm -hmm. had formed a band, and they had asked me if I could, because uh, I was in a, a band management then and uh, promotions, asked me if I could kind of start them off a little bit. So they actually started off over here at Scatter Beans. Scatter Beans. Oh, yeah. A Mexican mocha. Yeah. It's a little bit chocolate. And they were kind of like it's a Mexican they, mocha. I, I would say they were a funk, po, f a punk folk native rock band. alternative bl blues. Yes, Native, native American alternative, alternative blues. blues. Yeah, got it right. I remember. Yeah, uh, that was so cool. You had, they had, and then they have the, the, the music in there and the right. coffee house. Yes. Right. Coffee. Oh, yes. man. Yes. And it was, you never knew what was going to happen with the Red Corn Band. We never. had many great That's adventures. Right. Never. We were rock and roll for we sure. We always knew that <laughs> yeah. if, after and Tim it, had coffee, he could play for 10 minutes and then he had to take a break. That yeah, that, that coffee was, just hit you, man. Or, or when the neck of the guitar falls oh, off. The neck's off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, love you, but, Tim. Yeah, 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 Tim. It was great. But um, after that, the uh, writers uh, from the show, this is when you really learned that the writers from the show, we knew it before, but this one really bled through that. They watch their characters' lives, like the, the actors themselves, and they take ideas from that, like Jonathan yes. said. There's and also friends. I mean, if you, sure. yes. Yeah, so they took the idea from that, and they created that episode of, of John Redcorn opening his own casino and having his band play there. Yes. Before that, though, Jonathan had come up with uh, John Redcorn and Big Mountain Fudge, Fudge Cake. Cake. Yes. Yeah, which which is the Tom Pretty. Yeah, the shirt I'm wearing right yes. now. You know, a, a, a buddy of mine uh, named Chris Kaiser. Uh, he had a stand up bass because I, I have a little boat in Marina Del Rey, and we had two boats. You know, and we're we're you know not not again not you know proud of it, but we we're drinking buddies. So we'd sit there, and one day we said, you know what, let's do something. So we came up with a, a John Redcorn Big Mountain Fudge Cake. The reason Big Mountain Fudge Cake, because a Stuart Anderson's uh, was Hank Hill's favorite restaurant. And Stuart Anderson's signature dessert is Big Mountain Fudge Cake. Uh, so I kind of put it together and said, you know what, if we have permission to say Stuart, Stuart Anderson's, then we should have permission to say Big Mountain Fudge Cake. Mm -hmm. So we did this, this real harsh band. John Redcorn, Big Mountain Fudge Kick. Gotta get money. Oh, things I want to buy. I mean, it just was just really <laughs> gut-wrenching rock. And we ended up submitting that to uh, producers. And I guess it was about a year later, they called me and said, John, you know, we really like, you know, the Big Mountain Fudge Kick idea. I was like, great. How much money do I get? <laughs> and, of course, there was no money involved. It was just we liked the idea. I'm like, great. The band's going to love it. And the band at that time was just Chris Kaiser. And they're like, no, we don't want the band either. We just want the name of the band. Just the idea. The idea. And I was like, well, you know. And they said, yeah, and we got Tom Petty and Trace Atkins is going to step in as your band. And I went, yep, that's fine. Yeah, fine. that's kind of cool. And, and you know, Chris, yeah. Was, yeah, Chris was a white guy anyway, so I had sure. no hard feelings saying, no, dude, you're not part of it. Sorry. Couldn't pull the Indian card on that one. Yeah. No, that's and, that, cool, and that's what I think was the biggest moment is when we did that episode. That and was we huge. Had, and we had uh, Tom Petty. Well, yes. for me, that was the, the biggest, you know, name that I think we got involved with. We were involved with a lot of big names still. We know, but did him have him come Tom in and be, Petty, and be a yeah. part of the band, and then after that, Tom ended up being part of the part of the show. And and that's and that's no not to take away from Tracy Atkins because that no, was awesome too. But that became the band, and that was the episode, and it was based basically upon them playing down here at yes, most definitely in in our complex at Viejas. Yes, and so they, beans, they took that. The yes, yeah. that was a cool spot, yeah. man. They took that idea and turned it into an episode, and it was one yeah. of uh, Jonathan's biggest episodes. Yes, as I think, John yeah. Redcorn. Yeah, yeah so, man, that was yeah. Gambles with the future, which you know. It, it, and actually, you have one of the scripts. I do have that. I gave it to you for yeah. when you for your graduation, and um, Tom Petty's autograph is on there he's he's is that actually right? yeah you know, yes I have to look back yeah and tom that. didn't yeah. sign a lot of stuff i took it off the wall because you know what i didn't know people out there if you have signatures know this you have to cover the signatures up or over a period of time the lights will start to fade them a little bit and it'll bleed in i noticed it on yeah. someone i have a jersey a say jersey mm -hmm. and it started to fade so i looked at all my signatures that I had on the walls and i and i either covered them or, or I, I put them back a little bit just so they're not getting uh I guess the, the light, whatever it does. I, I, I did a, I it did takes a, a signature I, away though, but I have that. That's what, that's when you want, now. that's when you want to hold on to. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's real cool. I did a convention, that. uh, anim, animation convention and I was doing John Redcorn autographs uh -huh. and it was like one of the first ones I did. And you know, I was even, I was selling them like 10, 15 bucks a pop, you know, which is not a lot, but it's a nice thing. And I, sure. I probably signed like 15 or 20, like really, really quick. Uh -huh. And then I'm sitting there doodling with the pen and I write and I go, Oh, it's one of them eraser markers, man. Oh. 
and it was quite it because I had people for the rest oh, of the day no. coming back going, uh, <laughs> excuse me, sir. I if you know this, but you're, uh, I was like, ah, old Indian trick. Don't worry about it, man. For another five bucks, I'll be happy to yeah, use exactly. the You're charging them twice. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, but just, yeah. you know. That's what my sister says. My sister Snowball's always like, let me show you an old Indian trick. Yeah. <laughs> I told one of the young guys on the res that one time, I mean, you sound like your sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, old Indian tricks. Oh, man. But, you know, Jonathan has his moments because that are every time you when he gets into a set, he delivers. That's the one thing about, about Jonathan. Is he's, he's always got – he's got good delivery. It's like a classically trained actor. Mm -hmm. So, um, So I really appreciate that. Everything you do, Jonathan, Thank when you, you get up there, and I think you represent Indians well. Thank you. And I thought the Kenatote character was one of the best. I was on set with Jonathan yes, for yes. that too, and he was. What's that line? We 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 did a scene. Well, he did a scene with Amy Poehler, and I was consulting on this uh, in this scene. And Amy Poehler comes up to you, and she's trying to make you uh, donate money. Donate, which so is, I'm dating. So you want me to donate? So you want me to buy land that? from you that you already took in the first place and I don't even get to use the land. And, it, and, Amy, and Amy's pulled, well, if you put it that way, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and then the line she couldn't handle, though, is when she talks about your son. Your son, the bolo, yes, yeah. yes. She got more a bolo. Is that a new bolo? I'm like, yes, my son sells on Etsy. He's such a disappointment. <laughs> and, and she could not she handle it. Out. Yeah, she yeah. kept cracking on every scene like that. <laughs> you know, I can't remember how many times that you did that take, you know. Yeah. But that so it's it's great to see that he can actually hang with the uh, the big ones too. I guess you would say. You know? When I had, the first episode I had done, I'd so I was so nervous with Amy Poehler that that I could not remember a line. Uh -huh. And she reached out and she touched me, which made things even more nervous. Sure. You know, she's touching me. She goes, Jonathan, you know, you've got the part. You don't have to worry about anything here. Yeah, I was like, thank you, Miss Poehler. And then I was able to get the line out. Yeah. So that was like the first episode. Then the last episode that I worked on is this time that Adrian's talking about. And she kept coming up, and I would just give her this this, this little blank look. And she just kept laughing. Yeah. And she's telling directors, producers, do you see what he's doing? He's not doing anything. <laughs> I come up to him, and he's doing nothing. He's doing nothing. And she just kept breaking up on it. And my, my response to her was I took her aside and said, Miss Poehler, don't worry. You got this. You, it's not an audition. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to worry about anything. And she's like, okay. So you, yeah. you know, I think years from now, the, your your character on that show is going to be the one that people remember most. Like those little snippets, like that. Those little fun liners. show. I mean, I, I work with a guy. Shout out to uh, Brandon Booth. Woo! But uh, he's always sending me. He's always like he'll send me. Uh, he'll send me memes and stuff. But he'll send me uh, lines. Your lines from the show. Yes. You There's know, two things I know about up. white people. Yeah, and then yeah. another one of my buddies, Eddie. He's you know we'll all be throwing like jokes around about right. that and. Yeah. But yeah, it's, that's what oh, cool. people remember Thank you. from that show, or your lines from that. So I think it's going to be something that people look back. That's going to be the memorable part of that show, of the many things. But I think especially that, and probably beyond natives. I mean, I don't know. I'm always around native people, so you're always on mind, you know. But I think oh. with non-natives too, though. These guys are not native. Uh, well, Brandon is. He's not native, and, and uh, so when he thinks native and humor and things like that, boom, you're the guy. He goes oh, right thank to you. It. Yeah, I, but it it helps because I have been around. I have experienced mm -hmm. wonderful native people, um, the best male, hey. females, you know, kids, elders, and there is there is an underlying humor, and there is a respect for for laughter. There is yeah. something that that really makes us want to appreciate the beauty in 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 in, in happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's real important whether I, I do, you know, the scary boogaloo Indian or if I do the the, the funny guy. It's important for me to to remember what I've seen and what I've experienced. Again, I'm from Texas. We have no tribes in Texas. There's no reservations in Texas. Uh -huh. um, so, what you know? Again, I can, and I come from a, a state that they made sure that they eradicated all the native people. So, for me to be able to step outside of Texas and experience as a, a positive experience uh, is 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 where I want to come from as an actor. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'll say, hey, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. And then you kind of have to explain yourself, you know, why aren't, you know, I said, because, well, it's, it's not true to who we are. And I think it's so important, even in today's society, that we all are true to who we are. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're white, black, purple, green, just if you have that identity and, and you're lucky enough to associate with it and you choose to do it to the best of your ability. Uh, again, I govern 
my work a lot better than I govern myself. But as I get older, uh, I'm hoping to, to gain the wisdom as we get with age. Yes. Sure. That's cool. I mean, and do you feel like, um, cause acting so expressive, you know, you're, you're playing somebody else, but you know, being who you are at this age of the game, you've been here 25 years, you're, you're a name that's going to remain, you know, you don't have a lot to worry about. You're kind of solidified. Well, thank you. I appreciate it like, that. Like, but now you have an opportunity to kind of express yourself a little bit, maybe in different ways. And so now you got your spices coming out. Right on. Um, yes. How many flavors you got on that? Uh, seven magnificent seven. spice blends. You got seven flavors coming out. Do you feel like that is another way you're able to express yourself? You know, again, uh, again. Or is that through, just something that just came up real quick? No, my parent. I grew up in a restaurant. My parents okay. had a restaurant. Um, then I took advantage of the branding of King of the Hill. Yeah. Um, being part of the show and being part of Magnificent Seven and just being who we are. I mean, we all enjoy a good time. People that I know that would watch King of the Hill, we sit down, we entertain ourselves, we watch it with our family. Um, so I wanted to create something that reflected who I was. Again, I grew up in a restaurant. Uh, food is really important for me. I used to come down and cook for Adrian family a lot. Mm -hmm. And f to be able to create a taste where I'm come from, uh, a taste of San Antonio, excites me in that in my mind, I can see people actually sitting around, having a barbecue, uh, adding it to your favorite recipe or creating a new recipe. Yeah, Something that involves family. Again, from what I've learned through 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 being with native people and 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 taking a stand for who I am, is it's important to spend that quality time with family, sure. and what better way than sitting around breaking bread, um, and being able to watch maybe a good cartoon or or, or, or do a nice little podcast. Mm -hmm. So and it's something that Hollywood can't govern. In this industry, everything I'm so limited, but I know that I can create a fun time for people outside of television outside of a TV screen, outside of voiceover booth, I can create something in the kitchen that'll help bring people together and have a great meal. And at the same time, you know, help provide for my family. You know, with the COVID now, work has kind of slowed down for me. So I've really pushed it to the limit on, on, on my spices. Um, I'm pitching it to 11 stores next week. Um, I've got a whole new branding package. I've got everything. I'm 100% legit. You know, yeah. I've got the barcode. I've got the, the story of Jonathan Joss and how he discovered food. And you're going to love it. You know, growing up a chubby kid in San Antonio. You know, it, <laughs> Sounds it, it, a lot it, like it, my story. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, I could never embrace my inner fat kid, yeah. you know. And now that, you know, with the help of Hollywood, I'm able that. to do this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm just really excited about what the future has to hold. I mean, from getting married to being able to come back and hang out with, with Adrian and being part of Viejas again and, and, and watching uh, not just – social practicing you know distance practice it's, it's, it's a mastering of social distancing is is what i'm seeing here at viejas is is it's, it's such a wonderful place to be and um and what better place to be when i'm making major changes in my life for sure we love to have you here man it's Thank cool you. i feel like uh, you're part of the family you've been here i appreciate that you've been here many times throughout the years you know some of our you know christmas stuff some of our sporting events i mean way back to those fundraisers i mean yes those yeah, always, you know, always been fun i've always enjoyed adrian his family and his children i've always enjoyed everything about viejas i remember Thank one you. time i went to i took uh what i was cruising my cousin my boys we all went to venice beach about four or five of us rather cruising I that. and i seen you you know cruising down i was like hey you know, yeah for a like, hey. conversation yeah did a real quick live from the res you know that was great everything man like that and it was cool to kind of connect with someone and uh you know way over in venice beach you know right. coming from a little res here in southern california viejas I and mean, we're pretty well known but at the same time it's a small little res here right right and the small you know to go up there no, it was great seeing you run into another native and then they're yeah. like hey what's up man it was, yeah it was, it was really amazing cool. man no I, no do you get a, you must get a lot of that and the other thing i was in, like i was curious is like uh like how do you connect to people like do you mind people coming up to you no not at all like i knew you so i felt like you know you were cool with me obviously like, hey what's up but does that bother you when people no, are like hey, not at all not hey, at Jim all Redcorn, or whatever no not at all i mean i see it in my neighborhood a lot okay. because and if you don't know who i am within five minutes i'll tell you who i am and what i've done okay uh, it's important for me uh, again you know when i'm at my best uh to 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 be entertaining sure. to let people know that that there is a thought here mm -hmm. um and i i, I love questions I like people to ask, you know, and even on, and like King of the Hill, people will say, oh, well, John Redcorn is a horrible character. Uh, what do you think? And my response is basically, you know. You have told you that? Oh, oh, man. Oh, really? he, oh yeah. Because I mean, of, of the relationship. Because of the relationship. relationship. And I think okay. it's all about, if you think he's a horrible person, you have some type of experience to judge that by. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's personal or someone you know. Yeah. But, but like I said, what makes us human is admitting to our mistakes and trying to change those mistakes. So for me to, to, to be approached by people, you know, I, I have, I have no problem. 
I mean, it, it, it's always fun. The Ken Hatote from Parks and Rec has really, really helped, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm getting a lot of, of, of non-native people who watch the show who really yeah. like that character. Um, it's a great show, man. It's just yeah, funny all around. Yeah. You know, uh, a little bit of the Magnificent Seven, you know, okay. some of the older, you know, cowboys kind of can, can see that character. But as far as, as, as most notoriety, you know, it's it's got to be, you know, Ken Otote and, and John Redcorn, which I love fielding questions for. You do uh, social media and all that kind of stuff right now? I, I'm on Facebook. Right, you know, if you want to get a hold of me, if you want to figure out how to get Redcorn King of the Girls, Seven Magnificent yeah, Spice Blends. Yeah, where do you get blends, that stuff at? Facebook? Um, you can just hit me up on Facebook. Okay. Message me on Jonathan Joss on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I have a King of the Grill on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm on a Jimmy app. Uh, J-E-M-I dot app forward slash Jonathan Joss, all lowercase. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll flash that up somewhere. Yeah, I'll, throw, I'll try to throw that up. Yeah, for sure. But you can get all my products there. I do personal cool. appearances. Uh, I do weddings. Yeah. I got uh, uh, ordained not too long can you ago. you imagine having a, a native wedding and he comes up and does a, a fake prayer? Or oh, man. Yeah. No, and, okay. and, then, <laughs> and then I've got, uh, um, I do uh, the, the head, headshots, signed yeah. headshots. I've got some pendants. I've got the the John Redcorn sexy pendant, which I forgot to bring you. Uh, <laughs> I'll send it to you. Oh, did I feel... I feel yeah, Come it's on. a sexy one. It's he's like halfway naked, and you. It's, a, it's called the Redcorn Sexy Pendant. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm missing out big time. Yeah, now. yeah, it would go it would go really good after. That's yeah. the other one. That's a meme too. I see that. Yes, up there. yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I think I might have sent that a few times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So you, uh, are you doing? Um, so you're on you're on Facebook and the Jimmy, and then uh, and all of those things are there. They go out to the find. They're, 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 they're all there. Just Google it. Yeah, and I, I'm actually. Right. I'm getting ready to, I haven't told you this news, I'm uh, grouping up with a new band called Helgram. I did this crazy video nice. called uh, um, Rorschach. And um, I the band is this mosh pit hard, rah, oh man. So they invited me in. So we've got a gig on the 28th at the Eisenhower Flea Market in San Antonio, Texas. That's the Eisenhower Flea Market. Come out and see Helgram and John Redcorn. Um, we're going to do a couple of songs there. We're going to do uh, um, Still No Good, Arlington County Blues, and then we're also going to do Knocking on Heaven's Door. We're doing a cover. And then on the 5th of uh, December, we're playing, since Texas is somewhat open, we're playing an outdoor area 51 in San Antonio, Texas, Helgram, uh, December 5th. And it's an outdoor eatery where they have different food trucks. Um, and then in January, we're touring to Corpus Christi. So... It's 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 going to be interesting, man, because it's going to be a whole new. It's what Adrian always wanted to do with the Red Corn Band, because when we had Tim and Three, it was kind of a a, a folk bluesy, <clears throat> but man, these guys are just you know they wear leather and the lead singer is this really badass girl and and it's oh man, and this one guitar just goes off like you won't believe. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So the yeah, band is fun. the band is kind of starting up again. What's the name of the band again? Uh, Helgram. 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 Okay. Yes, right right yeah, on. and and uh, they just did a video called Rorschach. You can find it on my Facebook. Nice. Um, but that's exciting. Going to do the band thing again. Um, now that I'm, I'm married, um, I'm going to find a focus on, on, on making a better home. Okay. Um, being a good husband. Yeah. Um, and not, you know, allowing myself to enjoy the success I've had. Sure. I've never allowed myself to enjoy it. And now I think auditions are harder to get. Everything is being done by, you know, videotape so I can do everything from San Antonio cool you know um, I've got a little sound studio now at home that I'm able to put you know stuff down and then I'm going to venture out and try to do like Adrian and I used to when, when things were great kind of produce my own stuff to where I'm kind of in control uh, next week we're starting the um, Red Quarantine uh, cooking show <laughs> Red Quarantine yes <laughs> Uh, I like where, it. It's a where, good name. That's yeah, catchy, man. Thank you. That's a good one. Thank you. Where I'll be doing um, um, special meals. I'll be doing with my spices. Okay. I'll have a special guest, whether it be a friend or. And you're or gonna have to put cook. on the white shirt and do this at least once, man. Yeah. Oh no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> and we've got a, a new kitchen. We got a new kitchen at my house now. Um, and the way we set it up is that we've got like this great quarantine uh, to go window, to where all the recipes will be passed out to the window to my special guest. Mm -hmm. So, um, looking forward to doing that and. Um, you can throw that up on YouTube. You think you'll have that? Or? Yeah, we're, okay. we're going to go up on YouTube. You have a and, channel yet, or is that all? No, all not in? yet. Okay, I'm going to do it through the King of the Hill uh, fan okay. website. Okay, and then off of that, and then we're going to probably, you know, somehow uh, find someone who would like to put it on their platform. Yeah, for sure. You know, whether it be a native uh, a platform, non-native platform, 
uh, we'd like to, to really shop it a little bit and see if somebody would be interested in, you know, hopefully uh, sponsoring it. Mm-hmm. And I'll be one of the sponsors, of course, with, with, the, uh, with the Spice Rub. But, you know, hopefully we'll find some other sponsors to come in. And like I said, I grew up in a kitchen. I grew up in a restaurant. Um, and along with the Red Corn 7 Magnificent Spice Blends, mm-hmm. um, they can be used, like I said, in, in your favorite recipe or you can help to create new recipes. I think it's a good time. You know, a lot of people, they're, the baking bread thing was a craze a few months back. Correct. You know, people are kind of, a lot of people are stuck home, you know, and they want to, yeah. maybe they haven't cooked before or they're, you know, they've never right. been big no. into cooking. And, and, you know, and you it's just, a nice creative way to get your mind kind of relaxed. When you're, if you are having to stay home for the right. quarantine, get some, you know, try new experimental foods and yeah, man, try yeah. your spices. Try you, my yeah. different and things. I've got, I've got the, their blends. So you don't That's have to worry cool. about oh salt and this and that. Oh, I mean, it's all in there. It's all in nice. seven different kinds. If you want something spicy, if you want something smoky, if you want something, you know, uh, towards, I have a thing called a Mexican meat rub, which is a great uh-huh. comino and, 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 and garlic and pepper, something that really gives you Mexican that Mexican meat rub. I think I've heard of that, but yes. Not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are all the are all the names tricky like that? Oh, uh, I've got the 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 the, the clucker rub, the chicken clucker. <laughs> okay. I've got the jalapeno kicker. Okay. Of course, the red corn rub all. Okay. I got the uh, viejo uh, fajita and the vieja spicy fajita. Okay. So they're all they're all a little, little a little on the on the on, <laughs> on the on the good side. The rub all sounds like it might be the yes the, they are the best and way. And, and, it's, yeah. and you can rub any meat or any vegetable <laughs> to your liking. Yeah. Well, I, I wish I wish I could give out as many plugs right now, but um, I'm Councilman Adrian Brown, and I'll be appearing at Viejas Reservation <laughs> at the office uh, working. Yeah, so and uh, that's that's about all I got. Yeah, but no, man, thank you so much. You know, we'll for be bringing me all here. the complaints. Yeah, <laughs> oops, <laughs> him again. I thought we threw him off. What? No. <laughs> All the, all the memes, you know, if someone gets COVID, we know it was council. They were oh, oh. traveling. Meanwhile, you guys are all locked down. You guys ain't been able to travel. <laughs> you guys are all doing all the PPEs and everything, taking care of everything. That's Hey, um, what was the name of your label you had for? It was American Indian Music, right? That, that was uh, that was actually one of the uh, the uh, rap label that we dealt with. The rap, yeah. yeah, and that was they had a lot of our tribal members involved in it. It was a, uh, um, there was actually you know. Uh, a rotating group of our our tribal members from VAS and from uh, Campo. The main ones being a uh, um, uh, Blue Eagle Vigil, right? Shout uh, out yeah. Blue Eagle. Yeah, and then um, and also uh, Angel Halo. Halo Angel yeah. Gossick. Shout Angel out Angel Gossick. Yeah, That's right. And That's then right. and then there were some some other uh, players that got involved with it. Like, it okay. was it's kind of like with those rap bands, kind of like a, almost like a Wu Tang touch where they rotate out. But those were the two main individuals. So that was them. I actually the Kumi I, clan, but the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. nothing to mess with. But yeah, yeah. So it was the AIM, you know, okay, basically yeah, yeah. American Indian music, and then um, what you called uh, the the main, the, you know, I er- so arrogantly call my uh, label um, Adrian Brown Presents, and so, and that came from when I would host live shows and, and did at the time too. So it was sort of a presents, you know, type of a uh, mode that I was in. And uh, so it could kind of like uh, class to any type of uh, the uh, what we were doing, whether it be a live performance, a record performance, or a film, you know, production. So that was uh, that uh, era. Actually, we released uh, the Red Corn yeah, bands. Red Corn. Uh, First one, the Golden. Uh, no, the Sessions. Yeah, two of them. Did we se- did yeah. sessions, sessions off of Adrian Brown Presents, and then we did. We still did, no good. Yeah, still no good. Yes. And it's still no good. Actually, won a award for us uh, yes. for uh, best. Pro- Best producers at the yes. Native American Music Awards. Woo. Yeah, so yes, I'm that's telling pretty you, cool. yeah, that's lit. Yeah, back in you the know, day, like nowadays, it seems like if you do want to have a, a music career, because you see, I see a lot of the younger guys, um, they'll they'll want to come in here, and if they, you know, sometimes we'll bring them in if we can bring them in, but, um, you know, you have the ability with technology to record something kind of not so difficult to record at home with home recordings, mm-hmm. you know, studio, you kind of make your own thing, right? Um, hustle and flow style. You can uh, you can film it, you know. Even with your phone, you have the ability to get capture real good film, make your own uh, music video. You can get on social media, kind of start to create a, a social or a um, a presence, you know, on the social media. Get your uh, your YouTube channel, kind of really develop yourself as as an artist, an independent artist, and and become that that res rapper or that whatever genre you're in, and push yourself forward. That's all kind of new. Like right now, people have those tools. It wasn't like that 20 years ago. So I've always thought it was cool how you kind of were a groundbreaker in that to to get somebody who has musical inclination 
and, and try to develop them and push them forward and just kind of help them out and get their uh, their ducks in the line. So I, well, American Indian Music, I thought it was really cool because all of those guys you named are, are uh, you know, they're all good rappers and they're all doing their thing. But it just seemed like when you guys were all clicking, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah, they had talent. And I think I think you're right that we've we've moved the bar with uh, a lot of what we did from the uh, from the ABP level. Uh, mean the label, you know, we, we moved a, a lot of, uh, we pushed the envelope and I think that that picked up and, uh, there was, there was a lot of contemporaries also that were kind of doing the same thing too. And I think we all converged at once to, to pull forward. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, I wish the best to all of our native American artists, whether it be contemporary, traditional or, or rap hip hop, you know, so, uh, best to all of them. And, uh, I'm glad to be a part of that movement. Yeah, it's been cool. It's been cool to see that. It's been cool to see your scatter beans. Always, always keeping it fresh, man. Uh-huh. What I like is when Adrian, when I hear Adrian's, I put something together for the tribe or just. In, it's in always general. exciting. Yeah, always it's exciting. always exciting, man. Yeah. I mean, yes. um, you just you roll, you know, there's gonna be something where you're yeah. like, okay, I gotta see this and watch this. Yeah. You know, even Most uh, definitely. recently, uh, you know, you guys took down a home. You had you had a, you know you're out there jamming out on the guitar and all of that stuff set up and everything and. I was just, you know, things like that are really cool, man. I just think I got to commend you on that. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's where I, where I started with was, uh, you know, coming out of uh, the showbiz world, going into and coming out of the showbiz world now into the political world. But that still sticks to you. You know, yeah. the, the showbiz part of it. So you always want to put on a show. <laughs> you always want to give everybody a show. So that's a, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Thank I you, think man. people know, thank you. Uh, they know Adrian too in our region, you know, for, for his cool outfits. Cause you know, if it's like if you know, he'll dress according to where he's going to. So, of course, you know may I mean? see the jackets, man. Yeah, oh, I'm, man. I'm rather respectable tonight. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> I like it though, man. It gives character, you know. And I know people remember us. They remember Viejas. That's who you're representing. They remember you, you know. And they're like, yeah, I know that guy. It's like a, it Come sticks man. with you. No, most you know definitely. You're shaking all those hands. Everyone's got suits. Everyone starts to look the same, sound the same. You kind of need to stand out a little bit, have a right. little bit of personality, so they remember you or you're what you're trying to ask them for, yes. what you're trying to compel them to do whatever it is you know just that relationship you want to have something memorable man i'm just happy he's got a shirt on man usually you know <laughs> <laughs> you know no, like be, that didn't be, come be, out that didn't come out yeah right. man yeah adrian be, be cruising into marina del rey boy how you doing uh, be, be a coastal mode. fully <laughs> traditional coastal man just learn from him man because i tell you what he knows all, you know, just getting married last week. This guy knows all the tricks. Oh, How long have you been married now? I'll be coming on um, 25 years on this upcoming uh, January 4th. Yay! Yeah. See, he knew the date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He knew the date. Yeah, he's man. good. That's good. Yes. That's it. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's a long time. In Indian country, you know, you do see those couples. You know, there are not a lot of them, but it seems like every community has a couple real diehard, strong couples been together so long. You know, it's like it's almost one person at yeah, that time. yep. Yep. Adrian's definitely one of those people in our community. You know, he's got a beautiful family. He's got his two boys, his two daughters, you know. Shout out to all of them. Yes. And uh, they're doing good things in life, good kids, you know. And, so, and don't forget the work that my wife, Fawn Lily, of the Yakima tribe has, has right. done, you know, mm-hmm. hanging, having to hang out with the California Indians. So <laughs> it was much appreciation keep, keep for her. Line. Keep Love me you. in line, she does. That's right. Shout out to Fawn, man. 25 years. That's pretty cool, man. That's, uh, kudos to you. I'm, I'm uh, halfway there. I've been with my lady 21 years. Literally, met I've her. done twenty five hours. <laughs> I met my lady. In the still happy. Life, yeah, but we together. <laughs> I remember my first twenty seven hours of marriage. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Okay. I ain't done nothing wrong. Okay. Oh, Stand yeah. up. I've been faithful. I've been faithful for twenty five hours, three minutes, twenty seven seconds. Yeah. We're a weekend. We're good. Twenty eight. Twenty nine. Thirty. Oh man! So you guys are here chilling at the AS, huh? Yes, just gonna. We got like I said, we got married this out uh, yesterday. Picked up the rings today. Um, gonna head on back to the casino and nice. grab a little bite to eat and gamble a little bit. And uh, it looks good, all you, you know. I saw the billboard. We're uh, top ten in the in the world. Yes, uh, I forgot what Travelocity or what are those mm-hmm. TripAdvisor? One of those things they they ranked us top ten. And I'm, I'm and they one of my thank you, Adrian. I was in the elevator, you know, and I saw a clip of me. Oh, that really? is awesome. Yeah, yeah. from our commercial. The, get the, get lucky. No, not as weird as me standing there doing this to the door until it <laughs> over loops. Especially when the person's okay. going, are you going to get out here? I say, yes, ma'am. I'm just, I'm in this commercial, ma'am. Take the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> White people. No. Uh, I want to walk anywhere. <laughs> well, you know, I went to, I mean, my wife and I, we went over to the casino, you know, to, uh, got a room this was a while back, maybe a year ago even. And uh, we were like, oh, let's get away from the kids. We'll have a nice night and kind of relax and everything. And um, I totally forgot. I didn't know. We turned on the TV. Again, this is a night away from the kids. 
And there are kids are on on the TV. I'm going, what the heck? Yep, <laughs> yeah. But they, we had done a um for a few for a number of years now. Our community before this COVID, we would do um uh, like a week long film um like tutorial training uh, program to show our kids mm-hmm, what it is course. to do all of this kind of stuff, film and more. Right. And Adrian brought that and has been keeping that going. And uh, anyways, my kids were able to participate in that. Right on. So they made their own little film. Oh, perfect. And it was all cultural based. Right on. And it, was, it came out really cool. I was really proud of them, actually. Um, got to, and then, of course, Adrian, you know, is going to get it to the different um, film festivals that are, are, you know, around our region here and beyond. And so it was cool to take my kids up, my family, and then the other kids, you know, and their families travel up there, see themselves on the big screen. Right on. And uh, kind of build the community like that. It's so empowering. It's get empowering. empowered like that. Yes. But meanwhile, you know, I was just over at the hotel trying to get a wee night away, turn it on, there's my kids. But Wonderful. that was cool, man. That was pretty no, cool. Exciting. And then, like I said, I've, anything that Adrian does is always exciting. Yeah, I feel you like know, it And is. I'm always excited, you know, when we can work on a project together. Yeah, we're gonna have to do more of that stuff later on. Time goes on after all this COVID or something. Yeah, like after all this get blows that. over. Yes. Right, you know. But it's cool to see your kids on the big screen, man. I, I, I enjoyed that. Just, yes. And then, worrying. like, some of those films are pretty unique, though. You know, like, some of those kids, they always do, like, a slasher. There's always oh, yes. a couple kids. Yep. You know, you get, what do you guys get to do? Like, a dozen kids, whatever the res kids are. And then, I guess they break them up into groups or teams, which is good mm-hmm. team building, you know, to, mm-hmm. to build that uh, unity amongst mm-hmm. our kids. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they get to decide what they're going to make, you know, what kind of film, write the script, good English skills, you know, do the whole the, the staging for it, everything. And, and then they, they, if ultimately film it, edit it, cut it, put it all out and everything. Boom. But the, the one of the, fl- the, the the slasher films, you know, all these things, it's just, man. It's no, so it, cool it really watch. depicts the, cool, the genre man. the kids are really yeah. turning on to now. Of course, of course. But talking about expressing yourself, you know what I mean? No. That's the, and right now, powerful times, you know, sad to say our, our Native people are going through a lot of challenges socially, you know, with uh, depression and suicide and drugs and opioids, all these different things that's attacking Indian country right now. It's like the one thing that can really empower our communities is to focus in on the children and empower them and allow them to express themselves. And I felt like that program did a good job at that. So we'll yes. bring that back at some point. Oh, no, of course. Days. I think it's, it's, you know, can, can we, can we be restarted so, so quickly and so easily? How, how much of all of, you know, all that you do is like, do you feel it's therapeutic, man? Do you feel like it's, you, ha- you have to do something, especially now mm-hmm. and, and, and doing stuff that's, that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, these auditions I've had lately have been really nice and big, but at the same time, focusing on on, on making someone laugh, yeah, or or being able to call somebody when it's your birthday because they know that they like King of the Hill or something. Um, being able to take what you have. Oh wait, which, someone can call. Can, you can they can arrange for you to call. Yeah, somebody? I do. Or, I do that through my birthday? through through the King of the Hill website. Like I'll see oh, people like, oh, so and so's birthday, so I'll just call them and I'll just out of the blue. And the people are just like, oh, my God, it's really you. I'm like, well, yeah, I just called. It the birthday. <laughs> Dude, that is so classic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, man. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Yeah, please do. No, it's yeah, a lot of fun. That is so and, and, cool. and, and, and that's, again, that's I mean, that's fun. how we are. If we have something, we share it, sure. gift it. What comes around goes around. I mean, I know that's, it's, it's, it's you know, uh, stereotypical. But for us, for me, and from what I've learned over the years is that, you know, quit being so conceited of what I have and being able to offer to others because it really does make a difference for them. Even though I don't think a phone call from me is a big deal, but someone it's a birthday during the COVID was stuck at home. You know, I called this one guy and he's like, holy shit, you just made my birthday. You made my year. Yeah. I, I love the show. I watch the show religiously. Cool. He goes, and then for me to see you here, you know, so like, again, I don't do it so much for that person but i'm so egotistical that makes me feel so good that i can't help give people a call man and say thanks for watching the show that's cool that's gotta be fun you know what i mean i can only imagine how fun that is when you look back at your uh at your career you got a lot more to do obviously you're young but you know you've been in the game 25 years it's a long time what do you think you'll look back on and remember what's going to be your i guess what sticks out your legacy or you know, of course, for you, know, you even what's gonna be? Of course, you get you. I've I've, I've got to start at the beginning. You know, part of it is a lot of the Chuck Norris stuff. Yeah. Um, just because of my dad's one is my dad's favorite actors. Uh, being able to do uh, True Grit, my dad's favorite film, uh, Magnificent Seven, another dad's favorite films. To be able to do two westerns, um, and of course other westerns. Um, of course, the top of the line would have to be the John Redcorn character, mm-hmm. just for the reason that it it has touched a lot of people. And it's iconic. Um, and then what I would just have to go into uh, Kenatote, <clears throat> not so much because of how it was created, but it involves so much of my life, like so much of Ken is 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 Adrian Brown, you know, uh, so much of John Redcorn is me, 
Yeah. Uh, and, and, and to be able to create these characters, I take away from, from people that I've known. Uh, so I think John Redcorn, um, Ken Atote, and the Walker Texas Ranger stuff I did is really going to stand out for me. And, and, and like Ken, I really like Ken Atote a lot. I really think that he could have had his own series. Yeah. Because he was written so, so quick. And, and he always made sure he had the best suits on. He was always impeccable. Yeah. Which to me, you know, speaks a lot, you know, sure. for, for, for the for, for the writers and for the creators. So yeah, those two projects, you know, will will be the, you know, you know. It's an impressive reg- resume already. And you never Thanks, know what, what's coming. Who knows what the future will hold. Yeah, man. It's man. it's been kind of strange know. lately, but all I can do is just keep on trugging along and, and uh remain all positive. Of those roles come in when you're the old uh Medicine man, spiritual guy, hundred years old. They'll be writing wrinkles on your face. Yeah, right? I'll be, those haven't even come yet. Yeah, He's still in the uncle, uh, the snagging uncle roles almost, right now. Yeah, exactly. The Jim Red Cord and the, you know, yeah, you're yeah. The, that guy. But you haven't even got to the old old man roles yeah. yet. So. Looking forward to it, man. Yeah, I'm you're you're fun. you're working your way to following in the footsteps of a uh, uh, Floyd Red Cord. Oh, Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. Yeah, oh, oh, Floyd, oh, Floyd. Peace, man. oh man, legend. Everybody man. thinks him Elvis. Everybody <laughs> thinks him him. Yeah, Floyd. You know what's cool, man? Just as somebody that don't hang with uh, the Hollywood elite um, of the native world, but is is like to see these guys come out and uh, like Floyd, for instance, he come out and talk. And, and man, I you know when I was a kid, I just seen him in movies. I don't really know who he was. You know, I'm like, okay, I don't know nothing. But then you hear him speak when he spoke. Oh man, talked that about was, sovereignty yes. and you know just all of these things. It's like man, that guy's just powerful with his well, words. Well, well, and then you see him sing. It's just a whole different element. It's, well, it's like he's not just that guy on TV. He's a whole person. He's got a lot going on. Well, there, there's that's cool. One, I'll, I'll leave you with one great last story here. It was Adrian Brown, Tim Sampson, Floyd Westerman, and myself. We were doing something here at the university as you're coming. Yeah, at to SDSU. The, yeah, yeah. We're, we're there, and uh, Floyd, you know, is getting his guitar, and at the time it was before his lung transplant so he had some type of breathing apparatus that had oh. batteries in it and all of a sudden floyd's like um my batteries are going out and you know when an indian says his batteries are going out bro <laughs> you know out. you better look out mm-hmm. and evidently i don't know why they sent me i think they did just to torture me tim adrian say jonathan you need to go get batteries i'm like what? batteries for what he goes, well floyd's breathing apparatus these batteries and his batteries are going low. So for me, San Antonio, I'm like batteries, air, old man. Someone's going to die unless we get these batteries. <laughs> and he's ready to go on stage, and he yeah. got to have the. So I'm running around campus, trying to find batteries. So I go to the bookstore. Like, oh no, we don't have them at this bookstore. You have to go to that bookstore over there. And I'm running for a good twenty minutes. Man, I'm about to have a heart attack. <laughs> I I need new batteries. So I finally get the bat and finally get them to Floyd and. Of course, Floyd replaces his batteries. Goes up and sings, you know. And I'm like, man, Floyd Westerman, an Indian on fresh batteries, man. You <laughs> cannot beat him. No way, no way. But these two guys sending the greenhorn over here to go find batteries, you know, for, for one of the, you know. Yeah. No, they're, they're, and then just because I'm a politician, I'll make sure I finish this thought right here, this story, is that while Jonathan's running around looking for batteries, Floyd turns to us and says, you know the crowd sort of because he's kind of warming up on stage and he's all can you can you get me my uh, medicine bag and so of course all the non-indians start scrambling and they're looking for one of the, you know the little leather hanging bags you know <laughs> he really meant his medicine, medicine bag, bag. yeah <laughs> with, with, with that yes with that whatever contraption it is you know, yeah. medicine <laughs> bag yeah, yes he was like a medicine bag and they're yeah. all looking for it they're like no that medicine bag the, the medicine oh yeah yes it's like a fanny pack it's know? like a fanny it's, pack it is yes yes so uh, before we call it day i gotta ask you this because you are so uh synonymous with the meme and everything do you do this the thanksgiving thing do you guys do the thanksgiving thing do once you once you once, once. <laughs> i love it that's too much man. No, I, no i know um for for example I'll, I'll be doing this thanksgiving um i'll be doing uh cornish hens okay uh and i'll be doing a um shrimp polenta nice you'll be using a, your rub then i bet yes huh? i okay. i do a nice little shrimp polenta cheese uh, with a nice uh uh shrimp reduction mm-hmm. with creme fraiche so that's you know i, I i'm thankful 
Yeah. You know? It's kind of like a, uh, you're, you're a food person, you're a foodie type guy. Yes. So yeah. that's the day to do it. Yeah. I suppose, and, and then, it, and be thankful yeah. for, 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 for us, for us, for everybody yeah. for still being here. I mean, we're all under, we're all under the same stars right now, man. You yeah. know? Especially right now in this time. Uh, right. Yeah. We got to have conquer down and try to take care of each other. Yeah. How about you? Uh, Mr. Brown, you're going to be uh, mixed with tortilla rolls, or what do you got going on over yeah, there? Yeah, you know, the the traditional uh, native foods, we go that way, you know, the tortilla, the, well, we do the bird, too, you know, so, you know, we, but, yep, all right up the same alley, you would probably be, you know, totally familiar with what our uh, cuisine is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You look on you look on social media, you see everyone's plates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll put a little parsley on it to make it look better or there something. There we go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Put a little green. Put a little green. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming in. It's been thank a good you, time. Yes. Thank, thank you, Viejas. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us. Hey, man, I love mm-hmm. it. Live from the res, holla. There's a big old hole.